Good evening, everyone. The Shockers. Yeah. Today's the town. Or tonight is the town council regular meeting, Wednesday, November 16th, 2022, at 7 p.m. in the town hall green room. Can we all stand for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I did. We could have done it on yours. So Chris is not. Chris is late. 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 Okay. okay. All right. Uh, now, item number two on our agenda is visitors. Are there any visitors that would like to be recognized? Sure. Big crowd. All right. We're good. Good night, everybody. Keep our chairs. All right. Item number three: approval of the minutes from the November second, twenty twenty-two meeting. Do we have a motion to approve? So move. A second. Any discussion? Yeah, um, I wasn't here, but I watched the video of the uh, meeting, so can I vote in approval? Uh, yeah. No, you can't. Okay. I'll have to stick with you. Yeah, your physical press. You do? Yes. Oh, I thought, okay. After. So we got. I guess that was true. Did somebody second it? We have a second, but we're not going to have enough. Right. Well, if you vote, okay. Chris, that's four. One, two, two, three. He's got a oh, one. Yeah. Oh, you want to hold off and see if Chris comes in and then do it? Yeah. 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 You can, yeah. you can yeah. improve the minutes <laughs> later. Table. Table. Sure. Table. Until later in the night. Or, or day. Or okay. Next meeting. Let's just table it to the next meeting. I mean, it's okay. 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 Let's do that. You good? Uh, yeah. Um, item number four. Uh, we have appointments this evening. We have Bruce Lighty. Uh, for the Beautification Committee for a term until 6-30-2024. Motion to approve. So moved. Second. Second. Discussion? Yeah, just one comment. Yeah. Was this a fellow that was on in the beginning and then quit? Yes. Yeah. And now he wants He's coming back strong. I wish he was He's here. He's rejuvenated. So I could ask him what changed his mind. I mean, uh, whatever. Okay. Okay. The personnel. Yeah, I think the... I think oh, okay. All right. All right. That's probably right. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Opposed? <laughs> Abstain. Thank you. Item, or the second item is for Robert Murdoch for the Economic Development Commission alternate seat for a term 6-30-2023. He's replacing who left? Uh, uh, Dar. 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 Okay. So he's replacing. Second? Yeah, okay. second. Sure. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> Bob, see how easy that was? Told you. See? You wanted to come. Was that Bob right That's there? That's Bob right here. Bob. Oh, okay. <laughs> you thought you were going to have to do a lot of grilling, eh? <laughs> Don't forget, though, you're the new guys. So. Keep your hand down. New guys always get the uh, job. No, that's nice. This is the easiest part of it. I'm glad to see that community. All right, item, moving on to item number five. So this is going to be a discussion on transportation alternatives. Set aside grant for sidewalk renovations and extension on West Main Street. Uh, in the agenda packet, we have the grant submittal that was uh, sent in to the COG back in 2019 by the first selectman. Uh, gives you an overview of what the intended uh, yeah. goals of the project were. Uh, there's a site map which basically has a new sidewalk going in from John Street Extension next to CDS out to Lumberyard Road, which is just shy of where Connecticut Water sits. Uh, at the time, the project was cost estimated to be $865,000. Uh, as you can see, the letter that was in the agenda packet, uh, a commitment was being made at that time for the town to fund 20% of that project, which is $170,000 or so. Uh, the project was ultimately not approved by the COG and DOT. So the project never went forward and the demand for uh, the commitment of funding uh, was, never it was never necessary. Uh, however, with new monies floating in under the, uh, I think it was the Inflation Act, uh, that included additional money for infrastructure, so now the state has new money under transportation alternatives, which they didn't have before. So rather than opening up to a new competitive round to rate rank and go through all applications, the DOT thought it was just simpler to go through 
projects that did not uh, did not pass muster in the first go around. Look at them, see if the uh, towns are interested in proceeding, and if they are, then it would go into this new uh, funding mix. Uh, obviously, the cost of the project would need to be updated uh, and drilled down a little bit because these numbers are somewhat dated at this point in time. The uh, engineering firm uh, that is consulting with the DOT did offer an opinion on uh, what the project might cost now. Um, these numbers, uh, the original numbers that were in the application did not include a cost for design, which either was an oversight at the time or that the town was going to pay for that separately. Uh, I, I, that, I don't know what the full thought process was in 2019. Uh, that, that predates me. Um, based on the last sidewalk project that did go through the cob, which goes towards the stop and shop, uh, design was also not included in that grant, and Public Works was able to cobble together money that paid for engineering, but it wasn't fully called out, so I would imagine that was probably the same process here. Uh, so the project uh, goes from 865000 using current pricing to $1.9 million. Design would be estimated at three hundred and twenty-five thousand uh, dollars, and what we don't know is whether or not there's any right-of-way acquisition required. Uh, with the sidewalk project that went out towards Stop and Shop, there was a significant right-of-way acquisition required. There's just not enough public right-of-way to install sidewalk. The design did envision uh, some relocation of utilities, uh, which is not included in the original cost estimate either. Uh, so if you put in new numbers for construction, an assumption for design, and an assumption for utility relocation and any kind of right-of-way acquisition if needed, it takes the project up to uh, a little shy of 2.4 million, uh, of which 1.9 would be from the feds, and the town would have to put in a contribution of 475,000. The design standard for this sidewalk. Could you uh, say that again? Is that Municipal, uh, the federal side is 1.9 million. Mm -hmm. The municipal 20% uh, share is 475,000. Uh, the design standard would be uh, mirroring the uh, downtown area and what the sidewalk looks like basically from Hull Street down to uh, the Indian River Bridge, which is granite curbing, uh, the decorative street lights sort of that brick strip between the curbing and the sidewalk, and then uh, the sidewalk. If it was the town's desire, we can always change and value engineer some of that stuff uh, out to reduce the cost of the project, uh, but we cannot change the location of the sidewalk. Uh, so if we want to proceed with this, we would be proceeding, and then we're on the hook for 20% of whatever the result of the project is. We can always tell the DOT we're not interested, um, no harm, no foul, and you know, we, we pass on this. And if there's a different area for sidewalks, then we would have to put together an application uh, for that, whatever transportation alternatives has uh, funding again. Uh, so it's really sort of the question of the evening is, is there a desire to move forward with this? Uh, the challenge I can see immediately on the municipal side is unless that dollar amount's in the budget um, under the charter, that's going to require a referendum that dollar amount because uh, it exceeds the 300,000 that the uh, charter caps on it. Uh, so that would be a referendum vote for the force of the Now, to, to start this project, Carl, would we have to first put up all the whole two points up to me and then we get reimbursed from the feds later? Is that how it works? Uh, it, it kind of mirrors that. that process and you have the bridges so you know that's the least of our problems is looking at the cash flow side of it. Uh, it's coming up with the twenty percent and how that gets um, uh,
along this stretch of curve of the surface of the mix. In some places it's concrete, in some places it's asphalt, and in other places it's non existent. Um, so it's. Yeah, just that area. You would be aligning it with some, some kind of consistent curving, but only on the north side. And the south side kind of mirrors the hodgepodge. Um, you could value engineer out the brick. You could value engineer out the granite curving and go with cast concrete curb, or more important place, concrete curb. Um, costs obviously have ballooned significantly over where they were when this was originally cost estimated. So uh, it's really kind of pretty. Where do you want to go, if anywhere, with this particular uh, Is there any way that we can sort of shorten the length of the sidewalks that we're going to do? Instead of going all the way down to the lumber yard, can we stop, let's say, at uh, where it comes down? North High Street, I guess, the, where Friendly's is, or was. Can we stop there? I mean, you know, I, I agree that sort of, you know, sidewalks need attention from CVS going west, but I don't know if the town can for to build that high at this particular moment. And there's some spots that are really curious because would you put a sidewalk through the Larry's property? A gas station where it's all parking? That's the other side. That's the other side. No, no it is. Oh, no, that's on that side. It's the north side. Oh, north side. I'm sorry. Yeah, sure. You've got a couple of curious areas yeah. where it looks like there isn't, there isn't a curb uh, reveal that's left. So either there was no, uh, the apron wasn't lifted. was a curve revealed, the curve reveal is now lost to the edges. Um, so there's a couple of curious properties that you know, you've got to figure out how that would how that would work and how that would ultimately look. Um, you know, the question is are you interested uh, or are we interested only in a certain price point price point? How we find a local match is is gonna be a problem. Unless it's wrapped up in the budget, or you've got to VE the project now where the municipal piece is only 300000 which you can put it down. Uh, unless you want to put it up for which would be the budget, I guess. That's, that's the next election. Um, well, there is a lot of commercial design in the market. Since there is already new stuff, are we allowed to? Uh, sooner rather than later, um, because they want to 
make a decision on how many projects are in the loop. This only came out this uh, just somewhat recently, so if you needed more time, I can certainly close the loop back with the consultant here so that we've got to deliberate on it. You have to take the whole thing from John to uh, this, this, the span had to be accepted. Shortening a span is not a question I asked. They assumed that it would be in for If you wanted to shorten it, that would be a conversation we'd have to have back with the consulting engineer for if that's an option. So, like, a consensus, like, what do we? A lot of money, and it's gonna. I mean, if the project stays as it is with those numbers, it's gonna be a referendum vote. Because our park's gonna be over 300,000. Correct. I think some of those places are gonna be problems. Yes, there are sidewalks where we can. Do we have, can we ask Chris's team, maybe that is. Brandy was a point of working everything together. Well, I mean, that would be one of the things he said. Yeah, he talked about. Well, they would be out. What you would do is you'd, you'd sit there. And, gonna, if, but how much is that going to save you? That's what I'm wondering. Is it here, if it doesn't look good, why are you doing anything? I mean, because they're doing decorative lights. You know, so I mean, there's costs associated with the lights. Yeah. There's, I mean, that's costs associated with the lights. lights. The granite curbing is a higher end finish, obviously. Um, yeah. So there's another curbing you could do. So some of the downtown area has concrete curb rather than uh, granite. Right. So like in, in, in and around the CBS, a lot of that, and the, and the train station, that's concrete. So it's the materials in the area is kind of a mixed bag. So you, you'd have to, if there was an interest, you could be it, but it's a matter of how much, how much you can compress that price. Uh, and then the design, that would be funding that figure out where we're going to budget the design from. Uh, whether that's in and having the feds pick up 80% of the design cost, or whether we carry 100% of the design cost in order to pull the project, total project cost down. Um, so we'll put that back and forth. We'll talk through those. Not cheap. Not cheap. Um, no, we just think of so many other ways if we're going to spend that kind of money. Other, other projects to spend it on rather than than sidewalks in that particular area. I mean, East Main Street barely has any sidewalks, let alone dig up ones that were put there within the last five or ten years and replace them with something more aesthetically pleasing. Um, so this is this is a yes or no. We either move forward with this particular project or it's off. We can't. In, you, you, in can, order, you can. Monkey with the scope. You but can't, it, you can't it say. West Main correct. You can't say, I want to move it and put it over here. Okay, okay, so, right. so you've got to kind of go with that geography one way or the other. Okay. That's the problem, right? Yeah, I mean, that's great. I mean, I hate to give up the money that's going to be on the me. But the promise is right that the commitment was for that area. Just out of curiosity, does having sidewalks up there increase the value of the property in the beyond? No. Uh, so si sidewalks are not a factor in the value of the property. Right. Pretty good. Right. I mean, I get it, but I mean, it's a lot of money to do with suspense. The best place for us to look to spend money and to do things that we want to do in town. So that's the bottom line. If you pass on it, it's no harm, no foul, right? it, it, it's not going to you know, put a black mark against the town's name. Uh, it's just a planning or a financial decision. Uh, if the desire is yes, um, but if you leave it down, you know, obviously we've got to kind of figure out what the goal is that we're shooting for. Well, I, mean, I think if we get it down to the number where we don't have to have a referendum, it would be a bigger problem. Because you'd have probably a lot of people in town asking why we're spending that kind of money on sidewalks. Because it is a good chunk of money. Even if we get to 300, we just you know, bypass the referendum because the council can act on that. So. 
but that's the other thing that I'm sure you'll hear about. Just a lot of money. So I, I guess what, what I'm hearing from you is we have to get our portion right now. The R 20% has to be less than 300,000. Is that what you're saying? Well, I'm saying if, if we don't want to go to a Not the whole project but just our percentage of what we have to put in. Is that correct, Carl? Yeah, so you, 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 you don't have to appropriate your permanent share somehow. And that was never done when the application was made. So here it looks like we will be strongly positioned for an award. So where's where's the little match going to come from? Right. And if you, you go by the dollar amounts that are currently estimated, that's a lift in excess of what the charter gives you guys the ability to do through a town meeting. Um, so anything in excess of about 300 requires a referendum vote. Good. So if you're, with your desire to go forward, you'd have to have a referendum vote with a budget vote in order to approve funding, um, unless you were going to wrap it up in the budget. Good. <laughs> Two and a half a million dollars, one hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars. Is that the budget? Did you just you know, take it that story? We learned something else. This is a hard year. I mean, right. this is a hard year. Period. And but then I don't think it's going to be the last time that we'll hear you know this conversation and talk about things that we may be able to do in town. I mean, you know, so like you said, if it's no harm, no fall. It's not something that the town's going to be black eyed because we can take money. Again, you know. Been sitting out there for 19 that was signed. You know, I mean, at that time, you'd think they were done differently, and the money was allocated at that point. There was some some money set aside from the point that that, that that contract was engaged and that commitment was engaged with the state. It'd be a little different, but there was nothing. It was committed, and that was it. Yeah, and no, sat there for three years. You need my opinion on this Yeah, this were Pearson property, and East, I'd say yes, because. That's out of the terrible shape of what our plans are for Pearson, literally. Right. But it's not. You'd have to make another application. Find out the funding. Yeah. Of course. I mean, I have to agree with you, Mr. Chairman, only because of the fact that at this particular moment, anything that impacts our budgets and takes money out of our taxpayers right now is, you know, well, we can't do it. They're having a tough time meeting things now. Yeah, there's things that we need to do with that money rather than, unfortunately, comes at the wrong time. That's it. You came late, but you, you kind of get where we're going. I get, I get <laughs> it. Yeah, I agree. All right. So we're in agreement we'll pass on this one. See, look, yeah. we're saving the time to do it. Yep, some more, I got some more things for Carl to do, though. Yeah. We'll cover that. No, that's okay. Maybe somebody will <laughs> come along and give us the whole book. All right. We will move on to item number six, development goals for Pearson. Um, so I guess at this point, we obviously had some workshops, we've had conversations with the public, talked about the RFP, talked about what we, the council has a consensus on what we'd like to see, and I think Carl's just, I guess, needed some direction from us to say that is ultimately um, our position after hearing some input from the public that we would like to move forward with um, housing, senior housing, affordable housing, uh, where we want to list it with facade, you know, keep the facade as it is, and some of the other things that we've discussed. I guess we can give him that direction and he can kind of iron down the RFP that we'll be putting out to the public. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to, trying to finalize this, but I, I really need to, it's got to be an RFP for something uh, and not an RFP for it's free for all or it's a blank slate. you got to kind of lay out something, uh, whether it's how you're going to rank these things or a specific type of land use. So in this particular case, I went for, uh, or I'm going towards a specific kind of land use, and this mirrors the conversation that took place during the council's workshop. Um, so I just want to make sure that this is we're all in alignment on what these goals can be, so that that informs the RFP. So it's we're looking at acquisition of the property either by direct purchase or long term lease. 40 to 99 years as the ground lease is what long term means, and that's germane only to some of the affordable housing uh, funding stores. The town will not provide financing for acquisition. Uh, we're open to other transaction structures uh, based on whatever's in the best interest of the 
the taxpayer uh, properly made available and, and as is, where it is, how it is conditioned. Um, they're not doing anything to the building prior to the associated with the handle. Uh, acquisition of the site should be intended for rented senior units to low and moderate income uh, households. Uh, the developer would tell us what the income mix would be. Uh, for the site, the town will only entertain proposals that involve the adaptive reuse of the structure, preserving the original 1932 facade for the original front building uh, is a priority. We're not going to entertain proposals that involve demolition of the building, uh, only adaptive reuse. Uh, the town wants to carve out a park, uh, allowing for the gazebo and the two bronze statues to maintain. Uh, we, have to, we have to describe the area that we're interested in. Uh, and then, as was mentioned during the public meeting, uh, the Church of the Holy uh, Advent has a non-exclusive easement to allow access across the property. That easement does go away if the town sells the property. The easement stays in place if we lease the property. Um, so I think just to continue being a good neighbor, we'd like the developer to continue to uh, honor that, that easement uh, going forward to the benefit of the church as long as it's there. Selection, you know, we're looking for a qualified developer who's got experience and capacity to develop the parcel based on these general goals, being sensitive to community standards and design aesthetics. Uh, we would reserve the right to put an affordable housing deed restriction on the property. Uh, that helps us towards some of those 830G standards, whether the town wants to pursue a moratorium at some point in time or get to that 10% benchmark. It's got to be deed restricted. It can't just be generally affordable. It has to be locked up or something. Uh, and the design should be system with the neighborhood and the town make those decisions. Uh, the cake and eat it too concept, uh, so I'm trying to call it a public-private partnership. So we're interested in working with somebody that would continue some aspect of the building as a public use for a community amenity. So I'm trying to look at two bid options. Uh, one bid, one option one for the bid would be outright acquisition, 100% use for housing, no community uh, aspect. Option two is uh, tell me whether or not it's feasible, tell me how it's going to be feasible, tell me what we need, tell me how much space it is, what the trade-offs are, what they're going to be for us for. Um, so there's a lot more that needs to be fleshed out in option two for what that project's going to look like and whether the town needs to participate in a capital stack or not. Um, so that's, this is the part that we're having the hardest time writing. Just want to make sure we're still moving in that direction and that the public use is senior programming and general community use not incubator space not some of the other things that were stated but again mirroring the council's conversation uh, and that you know i want to know what those trade-offs are what the transition structure would be in order to get the public private partnership if they say yes we'll give you x amount of square footage but we need to put an addition on the building that's something that we should process. So that's just if everybody if this is good, then this forms the uh, helps wrap up the RFP so that it's it mirrors an intention of where we want to go. If your desire is to make it more of a blank slate, I have to craft the RFP in a in a different direction. Uh, see see what that uh, what that means. Yeah, when, when I read it through the first time, you know, option B, option two, I, I, I thought it was not as strong as I would have, you know, you know, my thought going in is ask, ask for the world and, and see what you get back. But now that I'm rereading it, I mean, I guess you're, you are asking for that, you know. Well, I'm asking for them to... <coughs> Instead of us saying we want X square footage, I'm looking for them to tell me how much square footage could be spun off. Because uh, there's going to be needs that they have to make the housing work. They have unit yields that they're trying to get out of it, which is why you know, if they lose developable space, they may want an addition. So just trying to let the developer tell us what that's going to look like. And then if we have competition, and they all respond to that, and that's the direction we want to go. 
then you can look at what that option means for area, what the restrictions are, what the trade-offs are, what the financial contributions are, kind of what that's going to look like. And then, then you know a little bit more of what's, what's doable and what's not doable. I didn't want to define the specific space because that could upset how the project gets gets baked. So especially with the position of the elevator, that really kind of causes a problem for being able to declare this much of the space is going to be remain public. So they may have to move the elevator that conforms square footage. Is it your experience that they might call you up and say, explain to me what we would by that? Yeah, so in terms of process, um, so in some ways it would be like any other RFP that we issue where there's a window, if you have any questions, reduce them to writing, send them in as a certain date, we'll send out responses to everybody that we know as a potential uh, proposer at that point in time, they would get written responses. Um, because we're dealing with a physical property here, in this case we would have uh, a site walk with a developer or a developer groups to walk through and then show them the property and then that would be an opportunity to have some of those questions raised uh, in order to get that information flushed out uh, and then whatever the response is we go from there. Um, so in terms of process we would try and flag that and have a forum where they could walk the property and you have a little bit of a dialogue so that there's an understanding of kind of what the town is looking for. And the verbiage that would be in the RFP would be much longer than what's here. Okay. Who's the on some of the legal notice of this we have sent out a proposal to others? Uh, it would be uh, both. Mm -hmm. So it's an official procurement, so we would have to put uh, an ad in the paper. Right. Uh, but obviously, there's going to be certain types of developers that are going to be interested in this. And while there may be entities that operate on a statewide level, they may not have the capacity or interest in being here because they have no other footprint. Uh, one of the concerns that we're going to be interested in is maintenance capacity. And what's the maintenance presence going to be? Is the maintenance presence going to be somewhat local to Clinton? Or is it going to be coming out of New Haven or Hartford or New London, wherever? Um, so those are going to be things that you're going to want to understand with how you make an award for who's going to be maintaining the property responsiveness experience. So that may track the universe of people that just have a certain, a certain geographic area. Right. Uh, so you've got nonprofit developers that do housing that are in Middlesex County, and that will form some of the basis of it. Some larger entities that are a little bit further out, so there's a, a pool of potential people that we would send proposals to if they don't happen to catch it in the harbor groups. <laughs> <laughs> We might advertise in the register rather than the papers. No offense. <laughs> Any other questions? Everybody we good with the scope of this? Yeah, I think it's well written. Yeah. Thank you, Carl. Carl, will you address for is there anything to address the fields in the back? There's so much property there. Uh, okay, so then it, it, that would need to be clarified. So the property is over three acres and we would be conveying the whole thing, unless you want to hold on to ball fields, in which case it starts to look, I have to, I have to, fl I have to flag that, uh, and obviously that really maintenance issues to that. Um, and also, there is a septic system out there, so the infrastructure of the building is going to be out in that ball field area, or play right there in the back. Um, so if there's a desire, to try to hold on to that, or that's option three. I kind of should know that now so that I can. I'm just curious if you were going to address it because it is the person. I hadn't heard anything to that effect, and you know, again, if the developer can give you a square footage that the council's happy with, but they need addition to the back of the building, you're going to lose fields. Right. So you got to say it. You got to say it now. There are parking issues. Yeah, and we, don't, park. Yeah, we don't use those fields. Yeah. It's not, you know, uh, not big enough. No. It's, it's been used intermittently for soccer, and it's not that high a quality. 
That's yeah, the last field to the first yeah. place. Me and him. Yeah. When he, at, when he was a midget, we had our Jimmy Bergsy had his practices there for the Giants. Yeah. All right. So we good. 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 Yeah. Move forward. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's fine. Got all that free time now. We're free to jump on that. All right. Item number five, seven. Small town economic assistance. The Steve Grant Uprising Resolution for the Radio Communications Upgrade Project. Um, we all have a copy of the resolution. So we have all read it. If we are good with that, we can make a motion. With this. No move. Second. Okay. Any other further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Thank you. That passes. We'll move forward with that. Item number eight is the finance director's report. Let's see. Hi, everybody. Good evening. The results that you have are for the four months ending October 31st. And the total revenues for the month of October were two million one hundred ninety-one thousand. The majority of which was one point eight million in state grant receipts. The remaining three hundred thousand included two hundred twelve for tax revenues and one hundred thousand for town service revenues. The one point eight million for the state grant revenues included one million two hundred ninety-eight thousand, which is the first installment of the ECS, the Education Cost Sharing Grant and $288,000 for the Immunity Stabilization Grant. Those amounts were received as budgeted and as expected. In addition, the town received a $256,000 state grant for municipal revenue sharing. That grant was not budgeted in fiscal 23, as the state was not expected to have the excess funds available for the distribution to the towns for that grant. So that's an additional revenues for 23. The 100,000 of the town service revenues in October included 57,000 for town clerk revenues and 22 of building fees, 8,000 for uh, boat moorings and six for police contractual. As of October 31st, the current tax levy collection rate is 56.5% compared to 59 the prior year, so slightly higher. Uh, four months year to date revenues are 51.8% of the total fiscal year 23 budget compared to 50.8% 22, so slightly higher. Expenses for the month of October were 3.7 million, 2.7 is the education operating expenditure transfers, 722,000 for salary and fringe benefits. And the remaining 300,000 is uh, further detailed in the report, which are the usual recurring um, expenses. Investment balances were 33 million as of October 31st. Interest income for the month of October was $30,000, and for the four months, it's $84,000. To give you some perspective on the impact that the rate increases have had for the town, the investment income for the full year last year was only 57000 so we're already at 84000 As noted in my written report, the earnings credit rate increases that the town has recently received from mainly the Bank of America have enabled us to offset all of the service charge expenses for the month of October. This is the first time in a couple of years that we've seen that, um, so that's a good thing. Um, and the town is expected to receive additional increases um, of this earnings rate credit in November as well. Uh, contingency and fund balance are unchanged uh, from last month and are detailed in the report provided. ARPA, uh, as I mentioned last month, the beginning of October, we received the final payment of the 1.2 million of the ARPA funds. So we received everything that was promised to the town. Um, as of early November, uh, we've spent 429000 of that, uh, that as well as detailed in a schedule in the report, which leaves $3.4 million available to spend. Uh, 1.7 of that is for a uh, town council to appropriate to projects, as I know you have on your schedule to do. Um, and as far as other projects that have been going on in our department this last month, we're still working on the audit um, that's in process. Uh, we've responded to all the requests, um, so that's moving along. I believe they're working on the uh, report at this point. Uh, the fiscal year 24 budget, all the departments have been given their department sheets and their um, capital improvements that they also want to have on 
considered, and they're to be returned by uh, December 20, December 21st. Um, the police pension funds have been successfully switched into investment managers in the beginning of November. Um, debt financing, I've also been gathering information needed for the offering statement for the debt issuance that's going to be taking place in early uh, February 23. And then lastly, the other thing we've been working on is Treasury. Carl, I think he's going to touch on this as well. We've met with the town treasurer. We've discussed different investing scenarios that would help further benefit the town with the recent take advantage of the recent interest rate increases. I'm working on cash flow analysis to help further in that discussion. And we also have a meeting scheduled with the Bank of America to review the town's position with them and we have the meeting scheduled for early December. So we're trying to move in that manner as well. I think it's my report. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Uh, okay, item number nine, uh, Chairman's report. Uh, real quick, so no public hearing that was previously scheduled that we've changed the course of this nature. There's nothing on the agenda for the model for the doctor for the And then 11-21, which is Monday, we have the ARPA workshop. Six o'clock in the year. Uh, Tom Mayhem, report. Uh, here's my report. So, as soon noted, the budget Released to the departments to work on what they need to work on. Uh, Steve Grant, the resolution that was on your agenda, helps move along the uh, pile of paper that came in uh, from the state in order to uh, get the grant moving to the radio communications project. Uh, Representative Copiel did help uh, release that after a fair amount of delay getting the actual documents. So there's a stack now that I've got to respond back to the state with, uh, so uh, the state was going in a different direction, but one bit more was because otherwise. Uh, so that's uh, clearly taking a priority in our future that we can get into contracting with the state as quickly as possible to be able to buy the equipment that we're looking to get. Uh, I did include in the agenda back a letter from Congressman uh, Courtney, who is supporting the town's effort uh, in order to try and do either some maintenance level dredging or full blown proper dredge of uh, Clinton Harbor um, within the Army Corps of Engineers' uh, annual budget appropriation. Um, there's some environmental testing that needs to be done. And there's a conversation going back and forth right now with the Army Corps to see if we can get that, that work done while we wait for uh, final determination of whether it's cleaning up of hot spots or whether it's a full blown dredge. So there's uh, more to come on that, and hopefully we, this can be federally funded rather than putting a town contribution into it. Uh, so that's, there's more to come on that. Uh, as Sue noted, the, we, we did make a change moving our uh, police pension investments. This was to change the process by which we do what we do, increase the amount of fiduciary training for those on the pension committee, uh, get more efficiency in our investments so that not quite as people getting similar yields, but at a lower, uh, lower cost which keeps more money at play for pension obligations. Uh, so Sue did her part. I had to do my stockbroker part of directing trades and filling out codes. Let's get that one done. Uh, so we've uh, finished the move. We are all square for the time being. And uh, that's, that's now, thankfully, in a, in a good spot. Uh, in addition to what I have in the written uh, agenda, uh, I don't I think it's in Sue's report, but there was uh, funding provided to the town previously uh, as part of a uh, opioid settlement. Uh, so we had gotten a few dollars. Uh, we just received our second check of $8,800, I think, uh, which is an opioid settlement from one of the, the producers. Um, that's a short-term check. Uh, they will go through for uh, like another, it will be a total of five years that will be receiving that funding, and it is to be dedicated towards um, dealing with opioids. So it will be more of a human services police type uh, potential project. There's a number of these cases going. Um, previously with the council, we did discuss the Janssen slash Johnson & Johnson settlement on opioids. Uh, this did not require the town to put together Lots of documentation, which I think was suggested during that meeting, is just really signing up for it. Um, so that 
That's now come through this week telling us what we can expect over the next five years. So it's laid out on a per capita formula. Pretty much every town in Connecticut got on board with this, which was good, otherwise it would all go to the state and nothing would have flowed through the local level. So over the five years of the Jansen settlement, it's about 34,000 focused in uh, uh, dealing with opioids. So that's, it's good news that we're getting the funding, and it's bad news that we have to get this funding in order to deal with it. But, um, more will come because there's several settlements that uh, are still in, in process. Uh, I noted previously in other reports that I've been spending time working with Bo on the uh, his ARPA one funding for 55,000. Um, he's been a little taken aback by the amount of paperwork that he has to fill out. Um, so there's been a lot of work with Bo uh, to keep him moving in a point. So I've been aiding him in getting that sort of way. And the last thing <coughs> I have for you is earlier this evening, Charter Vision met finalize where they are with a draft rewrite or changes. They're going to have their public hearing on December 7th to get public feedback on their proposed revisions. So what you have here is their current working draft in redline form. This is an unofficial version, not filed with the town clerk that sets off in kind of timelines with the town council, but uh, this is just to let you see where they're at, and you can square this, uh, see that they did respond to the charge that the council, uh, the council gave them. Uh, so they will have their, the next step would be they would have their public hearing on the 7th. Uh, after that, the document would have to be filed with the town clerk, uh, and then I think you have 45 days in which you guys have to have a public hearing. So, we're trying to talk about calendar this evening for when they would file at the town clerk's office, and then sort of maybe early January, the council would have to have its public hearing and then decide on um, where you go from there working with uh, the church. And that's it. Thank you, Carl. Questions, comments, concerns, anything? I have a question about the budget. So, I guess it's our local businesses who. Uh, so it's been flagged as an issue by Sierra and Marina uh, for navigation issues. Um, so they have been engaging Army Corps, sort of the local Army Corps presence, uh, to get uh, the summer with some mapping done to determine where you've got navigation hazards. Uh, and then on the town side, I approached uh, Representative Courtney's staff in order to see how we can move things forward. They reached out to the Army Corps uh, legislative liaison, and that, that sort of got us the letter that's in the packet. So we have the support of the congressman on it, and Army Corps needs to go through their annual work plan and decide how much cash they have that they can free up something to support Clinton. So the minimal ask is, deal with the hot spots of the immediate navigation hazards, but we would like maybe in one or two years out where they can plan it accordingly, the bigger the bigger church of the heart uh, to make sure that it still remains navigable. Obviously the marina operators have a strong interest in it.
Yeah, I just want to throw something out there on the board. Uh, I know it'd be a little difficult, probably for Carrie, maybe Chris, but uh, can we maybe just think about the thought of having our meeting at uh, six o'clock instead of seven o'clock next year? I know the police commission has just moved up. Well, are you six thirty? I mean, you know, I I know the police commission who had been meeting at six is now going to, I believe, move even up earlier. Uh, so they're entertaining that uh, thought. So it, it, I heard that Tuesday on Monday night, so started ringing bells in my head that, you know, just so that people like Carl could get, up, get out of here a little sooner, you know, and hang around. Uh, but I know it would be difficult probably for Carrie at school. Not for me, I'm back, I'm back by then. Chris? <sighs> Um, tell them tell, tell, honestly, Chris, if it's a burden, just no, say burden. No, I, it's hard to think through. Like, for work, it would be fine. For sports after school, um, from coaching, um, six is probably tough. Maybe 6.30 would be. All right. Just so we think about it, because you... It'll be in our agenda for setting the schedule for next month. So yeah, that's what I mean. We're going to settle it. So just give you a couple you of days want. to think about it. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds good. If not, no big deal. Most of my workers are open. Okay. We're going to talk about it the it's next day. Dog. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? I think Carl for moving the Pearson thing along. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. you got to make him smile. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to. All right. All right. Item number 12, Town Council Committee Liaison Reports. Could we get back to 11? What do you need? Oh, sorry. You and I had a discussion, I think, on election day about the charter and possibly adding something about attendance. Yeah, I don't know if that's too late at this point. Is that too late today? Uh, just, I mean, the, the, the conversation was attendance at council meetings because it becomes an issue. And, right. So, I mean, it was just an issue of the process. It would be, if that's an issue the council has a concern about, you should go to their public. So, okay. and have somebody say that so that they can incorporate it and discuss it amongst themselves before they make the final their final with the town clerk. Otherwise, you would have to then consult with them. And so after they file it and make it and set the wheels in motion with the town clerk's office, if there's an addition or change you want, then you have to consult with them and they would have to deliberate over it anyways. Right. But they could always say no. Uh, and that gets to an issue of whether the council wants to continue to go forward with the term revision without that issue or whether it's critical and the whole thing kind of crashes because you don't have that in there. And isn't it tricky? I don't think it's critical. Oh. The whole thing will be tricky. Yes. So it's, if it's an issue, then it's something we talk about. Uh, it, it's easier for them them to discuss it, and then I've got to get some uh, advice and direction from the town attorney and work out, flesh out the concept into, into language that is, is more clear than what we had in the last version of the term. Okay. All right, so public hearing. you got to go. Seven, seven. you got to go to public hearing. It's a public hearing. you got to bring up your, your topic. December 7th. Yeah. Day of infamy. All right. All right. Anybody else for 11 before we go to 12? All right, number 12. Uh, Town Council Committee liaison reports. Is there anybody that anything to report? Unfortunately, this is the ABC. Okay. Election day, but I noticed that Carl is working now with the Yes, so they, they made a decision that they would go forward and go through a process to uh, get the ABC some direction. Excellent. Anybody else? Police Commission, two nights ago, um, as usual, their budget right on for the police and uh, the uh, communication one will be better now that we have this individual working and uh, working out very well. So they're at full staff. Uh, the only thing that I have of note is that the uh, uh, 
dog program uh, is in force. They've got a dog. And it's off to school for three weeks now with the handler. And uh, just so everybody will understand that uh, the program through donations is fully funded for at least four and probably five years. And that, uh, so uh, that's a good thing. And uh, the program, the SRO officer will be the individual that has the dog. And you will have it full time, 24 hours. It'll be up at the school with him. The school has agreed to that. It's no problem. They think it's a great idea. And then, uh, of course, he'll be on call for whenever he needs to be. It's a service dog, in case people are wondering. It's, uh, you know, it's not a canine uh, opioid dog or anything like that. It's one to uh, help people uh, in times of uh, disasters and stuff to uh, uh, be empathetic, I guess, or whatever. Calmer down, or I guess. Calmer down. So, it's an official term. Calmer down. I make these up all the time. Clinton now has a calmer down. I make them up all the time. So anyway, uh, so that a uh, what? How long do they last? Well, I don't know. Can I just say that they just took an officer out of patrol and out of his job and sent him off for three weeks of handler training, right? That was the officer was the cost incurred by the department to well, implement this. I tell you, Carol, I didn't pick it up that way. What I heard was that the SRO officer is Who leaving the school. the school. Right. And he's going with the dogs. Mm -hmm. And that they would cover him by whatever means. But I did not hear the word overtime, quite frankly. I can investigate that for you if you if you like for the next was, meeting. That was always my concern. I understand. It yep. was the personnel costs right. involved in this program. Not the dog. Right. Not where the dog was coming from. The personnel costs. And the fact that that dog has an availability situation also. If there was, God forbid, some terrible calamity in town, they would want that dog to report. The officer would be there. You're talking, yeah. you know. That was always my concern with this program. Okay. Was the ancillary but, costs. But they're also, they say it's fully funded. For the dog. For the dog, you know, right? The program, the you know, keep the dog, the purchasing of the dog, and everything else. Food, Not that the is all. Uh, yeah, the food and all that. I mean, Carol brings up a very valid point. You know, some of the personnel. And costs. that's what I had asked the chief for that we did not receive that. So there we go. Thank you.